growing up for myself, you know, I was surrounded by other girls who would say things like, I'm bad at math, I don't get computers, I don't know technology. And even though that wasn't something I was saying, it did become part of the language around me. And so I started to feel the same way. And that becomes part of the subconscious language we speak as women. I knew growing up that um, I really was interested in things that girls typically weren't. And I really did experience, probably by the time I was 12 or 13, that messaging that said, you don't belong here, you're not smart enough, you don't know what you're doing. And I remember being, again, kind of angry, but also being really, really motivated uh, to do what they said I couldn't do. When I was growing up in Sri Lanka, the boys kind of felt that it's uh, mathematics for boys and uh, the girls shouldn't be involved in it. So that I took it as a challenge and I continued to learn ma more mathematics and I think currently I excel in mathematics. <laughs> I think there's a lack of women in STEM because there isn't anyone to look up to. Um, and so young girls aren't really exposed to STEM as a career path. It's the same thing in the tech sector, where less than 5% of technology startups are created by women. It prevents other women from seeing themselves in those same roles, and it just compounds the problem. When we look at successful female engineers, uh, women who are successful with uh, technology companies, they're often positioned as the exception rather than the rule, and that's a disincentive. It, it's hard to imagine that you can be successful there if somehow other women are portrayed as being special in some way. I think STEM is pretty broad, so uh, it really depends on which particular industry you're talking about, I suppose, and, and what industry that, that women are interested in. Um, but in general, it, to the extent to which there's been a lack of representation of women in some of these industries, it just brings another perspective. It, it, uh, it adds more diversity to the, to the discipline, and I think that's really important. We can encourage young girls to get involved in STEM by exposing them to STEM career paths. And really, it starts with parents and educators in introducing these career paths to these young girls. I think if we encourage our young girls to be fearless and exploratory and curious, then they'll naturally fall into the STEM careers. We also need to change the language around how we talk about things like math and science. So little girls aren't saying, I'm bad at math. Instead, they're saying, I'm really good at math. I think that uh, young women can get started in STEM by believing themselves they can do it and also enjoying what they do. These two things will take them a long way. Mount Royal is helping change the culture of women in STEM because of the kind of institution and university it is. So we believe in cross-campus teams, we believe in interdisciplinary teams, we believe in playing to our students' strengths. And ultimately what that does, by the time you graduate and leave us at Mount Royal University, is you're good to go. You've got the confidence, you own your intelligence, and you stand in your intelligence, and you are ready to contribute. I'm really optimistic about the role of women in STEM. Uh, I can only speak to my experience in biology, because that's my discipline, but ever since I've arrived at Mount Royal in 2007 full-time, I can say that the majority of students in our classrooms, not just sort of equalization, but I'd even start, start to say majority of students in our classrooms uh, are female students. In fact, even in some of the senior courses, I'm seeing a lot of women getting involved in research projects as well. For example, last semester in my senior physiology class, out of the nine people that took it, only one was male. Uh, so I think we're seeing a lot of women getting involved in not only in biology courses, biology programs, uh, but also uh, biology research experiences as well. I'm pretty optimistic about the future of women in STEM. 
um, it's being recognized as, as an issue that enrollment is down in post-secondary institutions to these fields. So it's important that programs like Explore IT um, continue to encourage students and young girls to explore STEM in STEM as a career path. I'm really excited about the future of women in STEM. I think we live in an age where technology's never been more democratic. I think anybody can meet a community and solve whatever they want to solve. And I'm delighted that there are lots of ways for girls and young women to be involved in that. And what we find now is anybody can reach out anywhere globally in this world, come into community spaces and do anything, anything that they can imagine. I, I think it's an incredibly empowering space for girls.